How does one individual encapsulate the resilience and cultural richness of an entire community? Let's dive into the life of Johanna July to find out. Born as Johanna Phillips in the rugged landscapes of Nacimiento, Mexico in October 1860, Johanna's life is a testament to the tenacity and cultural vibrancy of the Black Seminole community. Her childhood was shaped by the aftermath of the harsh Indian removal policies of the 1830s that forced her family to seek refuge in Mexico. Eventually they relocated to Texas, which marked a new chapter in Johanna's life. It was in the Black Seminole settlement near Fort Duncan where Johanna's formidable spirit began to shine. In this challenging frontier, she honed her skills in an unusual profession for a woman of her time. In the rugged landscapes of Texas, Johanna would defy expectations and gender norms to become an accomplished horsebreaker. But before we get into the rest of this video, we want to take a quick second to tell you about our special limited time offer. We are giving away free copies of our newest critically acclaimed book, 13 Black Scholars Who Admitted There Were Black People in the Americas Before Columbus. This exclusive offer is our way of saying thank you for your incredible support and sticking with us on our knowledge-filled journey into true ancient American history. Dive deep into history with us and uncover truths that challenge what we've been taught. But hurry, this offer won't last forever. Click the link in the description and grab your free copy. Now let's get back to the video. Johanna's handling of horses wasn't just a job, it was a testament to her ingenuity and the survival tactics of her people. Picture this, a woman living in the late 19th century standing beside the robust currents of the Rio Grande, but she isn't just there for the view. With her are wild horses, creatures as untamed as the frontier itself. Now, Johanna had a unique approach to horsebreaking, one that was as practical as it was ingenious. She would lead these horses into the river, not just to cool them down, but with a dual purpose. As the horses splashed and swam, expending their energy, Johanna would be washing her clothes in the same waters. It was a method that made the most of her environment, a testament to her resourcefulness, and a reflection of the survival tactics passed down through generations of the Black Seminole community. This unconventional approach to horsebreaking wasn't just about taming wild beasts, it was about understanding the land, knowing its ebbs and flows, and using it to her advantage. Her intimate knowledge of the environment was a clear demonstration of her ability to adapt, to innovate, and to survive in the challenging frontier landscape. Johanna was not just breaking horses, she was breaking barriers, showcasing the resilience of the Black Seminole community. Her life, her work, her legacy, all serve as a powerful reminder of a woman who refused to be defined by the constraints of her time. Yet life wasn't all about horses and hard work. Johanna's personal life was a complex tapestry of relationships and challenges. In the midst of the rugged frontier, she navigated tumultuous liaisons that reflected the complexities faced by women of her era and background. One of these was her marriage to Carolina July, another black Seminole scout. This union, however, ended in strife and danger, leading to a dramatic escape to her mother's home. Her subsequent marriages, particularly to Alexander Wilkes, brought her into the sphere of military life, further embedding her into the fabric of the frontier community. These relationships, while fraught with challenges, never broke her spirit. Even in the face of adversity, she held on to her independence, never losing sight of who she was or where she came from. Despite her personal struggles, Johanna remained a beacon of independence and resilience, a testament to the spirit of her people. Johanna's story would have been lost to the annals of history if not for her interaction with the Federal Writers Project in the late 1930s. This New Deal initiative designed to support writers during the Great Depression played a pivotal role in preserving her unique narrative. Johanna's interviews, collected under this program, provide a window into a life lived at the intersection of Black and Native American cultures and a woman's experience on the harsh frontiers of Texas. More than just individual recollections, these narratives also shed light on the broader historical saga of the Black Seminoles. A community often overlooked in mainstream historical discourse, the Black Seminoles' story of resilience, adaptability and survival against numerous adversities is beautifully encapsulated in Johanna's tales. From her unconventional profession as a horsebreaker to her tumultuous personal life, every aspect of Johanna's story contributes to the rich mosaic of America's past. Johanna's narratives serve as a crucial link to understanding the rich tapestry of American history, reminding us of the diverse narratives that often go unrecorded. Johanna's death in 1942 marked the end of a life that was both ordinary and extraordinary. 
Her final resting place, the Seminole Indian Scout Cemetery in Brackettville, is a silent testament to her enduring legacy. In the grand scheme of American history, Johanna July personified the resilience and rich cultural heritage of the Black Seminole community, often overlooked in mainstream narratives. Through Johanna's life, we gain a deeper appreciation for the complex narratives of those living on the fringes of dominant historical accounts, reminding us of the diverse tapestry that constitutes American history. Trust us when we say, this journey through America's hidden black past is just beginning. If this glimpse into a world lost to time has captured your imagination, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more adventures into the unknown. Lastly, for more information about the names and subjects mentioned in this video, get your copy of the Amazon best-selling book series, 19 White Men Who Admitted There Were Indigenous Black People in the Americas, and 13 Black Scholars Who Admitted There Were Black People in the Americas Before Columbus by Chase McGee. Link in the description. Stay curious and keep exploring.